Hi, welcome once again to Coastwide Church Victory Studies. Well, again, welcome Susan and uh, appreciate her joining me to be able to share this Word of God with you. And uh, we're going to continue on what we spoke about the last two weeks about defeating disappointments. We heard from a number of you and who said that it really, really helped them tremendously. And so we want to continue to share some uh, great things about how you can continue to defeat disappointments and find a real place of rest in God. And so we're going to have a word of prayer and Susan's going to pray and then we're going to open the word and go through the word together. Well, Father, we thank you that you allow this time that we can come into your presence, into your anointing and receive the truth of your word. I thank you that your word will help us to, to be delivered from disappointments and the ill effect of it to walking the victory and the overcoming power that you have placed in us through the anointed one and his anointing. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. So I, I'd like to take just a few moments to kind of recap and, and look at some of the scriptures that we used over the last several weeks to just refresh our mind again of where we're going. We started off with Isaiah 54 and and uh, verse 17, and uh, we did read it out of the Amplified Version, but let's think about it just in the New King James, James Version, where it says that, that uh, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And word prosper means to come to another level or get help on the way. Yep. So there's no weapon that the enemy can form against us that can kind of bring uh, disappointments into our life, there's no none of those, and, and we need to believe that. Yep. Because see, when God says those kinds of things, He's giving us the ability, the anointing to be able to overcome those disappointments mm. and not let disappointments overcome us. So it says, "No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper," and every tongue which rises against you, or every judgmental word that rises against you, He says that we shall condemn the servants of the lord will condemn those words yep. and so we need to understand i said this that that many years ago the lord spoke to me and he said that every judgmental word but every negative faithless ungodly and critical word that is spoken against you you shall yep. condemn yep. and and the way that i've learned to condemn them is to take the sword of the spirit and in the realm of the spirit I see those words and I cut those words off. I, I will not allow those words to get on the inside of me. I, I hope you'll remember this uh, uh, illustration that I used. I said, when someone says something about me, and, and I'm not talking about good words, but unkind things, I will do my best to hold them out here. I, I won't allow them to go past here to get into my spirit. I will hold them out here and I will judge those words. Are those words honest and true and a good report? And is that what I'm truly like? And if the answer is, well, yes, then I receive that and I allow the Holy Spirit to change me in that area. Hmm. But if they're words that are just being critical of me and, and being negative and faithless and that, then I will do my best to let those words fall. I, I do, I, I work hard and and I don't always succeed, but you get better of it as you go along. And so you let those words fall and you don't let them get on the inside of your spirit because once they get on the inside of your spirit, they take root in your spirit. Yes. And then you've got to try to dig those things out. Yes. And they're much harder once they, they get on the inside of you and you have to try and dig them out. Then we went to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and we, re we read verses 8 and 9. And it says, We're hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Mm. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. So here the Apostle Paul is saying, look, all of these things that happened to me, I've, I've been hard-pressed, I've been crushed, I've been perplexed, I've been in despair, I've been persecuted, I've uh, been forsaken, uh, struck down, but I'm not destroyed. 
those things have not had the power to destroy me. And that's what we need to realize, that there can be trouble, there can be uh, disappointments all around us. But, but we choose, are we going to allow those things to disappoint us, to cause us to be distressed, or are we going to rise up and say, no, I, I, I'm not going to allow that to get into my spirit. Yeah, yeah. I reject those words, no matter who they're from. Yep. I'm not going to let them get on the inside of me and cause me to be disappointed. Because ultimately, how can I be disappointed when God is such a good God? Yes. yes. Such a wonderful God to us. Yep. Then we went to this amazing verse of Scripture in 1 John 10. Uh, sorry, not 1 John, but the Gospel of John. Chapter 10 and verse 10. And and really, this verse is showing us two profound things. It's showing us, number one, where disappointments come from. And it's showing, number two, what Jesus has done for us. Yeah. So would you like to read John 10 and verse 10, please? The thief does not come except but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So it is, to me, this is so clear, that, that we can understand from this verse of Scripture whether something has come from God mm -hmm. or whether something has come from the enemy. Because I think often that's the question that most people have. Yes. Is this from God? Or is this from the devil? Devil, yep. And so when you when you look at this verse, it's very to me it's crystal clear. Yes. The first of all, it's saying this that the thief and 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 that's not Jesus, obviously that's the devil. Mm. So it's saying the devil he comes to uh, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yep. So if Something is going on in your life that is trying to steal from you, trying to steal your peace, trying to steal your joy, trying to steal your health, trying to steal your finances, trying to steal your relationships. And, and if then it's coming to try to kill you, <laughs> and then it's going to try to, to destroy your life, if any of those three things are happening, that's not from God. Mm. It's really not difficult. That's true, yeah. Yep. But but so many people struggle with is this God doing this or is that not or is this the devil doing? Oh, I don't know what it is. Come come to this verse of scripture, and it's very very clear, because then Jesus says this: I have come that you might have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. Yep. So one is trying to steal kill, destroy, the other one is coming that you might have life yes, and have it more abundantly. Yes, yeah. So th this, this verse is more has more anointing on it than motivational um, prompting can do. So therefore, if we use the word of God with its anointing on it, its strength, its revelation to you, um, then you will overcome the disappointments. So therefore, disappointments are more than just natural mm. things but they are a spirit thing so so it will, will it will steal from you your spiritual strength and then it will try to kill your spiritual life and then it will just kill you spiritually yeah. and so uh, it's more than a motivational get up dust yourself off type thing go again sure. but as you use it so as as you're praying for yourself you just tell the thief you cannot steal the word of god from me you will not kill me by taking the word of God away from me, but I will live and not be destroyed yeah. because the word of God is the answer yeah. to dealing with that. Motivational uh, promptings will, will help you, but it's not until you get the anointing and the truth of God's word mm. in that yeah. then you can de truly yeah. defeat them. And I think that, that to me is really the key in this whole study is what does the word say about it? Yeah. Not what the 
uh, situations of life, say, or your best friend, or, or what does the word say about it? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's what the word says, because the word is spirit and it's life. life. And God performs his word. He does. He watches mm. over it to perform it. Mm. That's exactly right. And so let's go down to John chapter 14, uh, verse 27. Mm. Jesus, now, now this is Jesus speaking, and he says this, Peace I leave with you. And then he says this remarkable thing. He says, My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Mm, mm. So again, we're just recapping and several things here. He says it's my peace. Now we need to receive the peace of Jesus. We, we can't think it's a worldly peace. The world tries to have peace. Mm. Like I think we mentioned last week, the, 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 the Middle East tries to have peace, but they're not looking to the peace giver. Mm. They're just trying to do it amongst uh, uh, men with human ways, and it just keeps failing yes. all of the time. It's not until the Prince of Peace is allowed to bring his peace in true, true. that, that you know, things will change. Mm. But then he says this, he says, let not your heart be troubled, mm. neither... Let it be afraid. Afraid. Yeah, yeah. So he's saying, if I could read it this way, you let not your heart be troubled. You let it not be afraid. Mm. We we have to choose to do that. It's not just an automatic thing. It's by, by faith. Everything in God is by faith. Mm. So we have to believe and we have to receive. Yes. And so... I receive Jesus' peace. Mm. I receive that my heart is not troubled. I receive that I'm not letting fear come into my life in any way. It's interesting. It says, peace I leave with you. So that, that's an, an anointing that is resident here on earth. Yeah. And it never leaves. Yeah. Peace is here. So turmoil is the opposite to peace, war. Mm. Is the opposite. Whereas Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace. So when you understand his peace, then you understand the peace that he has mm. has left. So like it says, let not your heart be troubled. So when, when you are feeling that anxiety for for any any reason, you know, and I, I'm thinking more to do with mental health than the fighting that's that's happening at, at the moment. But with the mental health well, when your your peace, your your um, ease of thinking, where you're not anxious about stuff, when things aren't making you nervous, God, the, Jesus said, "My peace I leave with you." So that anointing is here. So all we need to do is call upon that peace, yeah. just as a, as a, yeah. the same as you know, open that window and call that blessing in. Well, open the window of your house and call that peace into you. And you can call it mental peace. Yeah. You can call it any peace yeah. because Jesus' peace was um, nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing broken, wholeness, fullness, and completeness. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, what that, he has. That comes from the root word shalim because most people, they would go, oh, shalom, shalom. And, and that's fine because that's meaning peace. That's meaning an absence of turmoil. Yeah. But if you dig down to the root of that, it is the word shalim, which means wholeness, fullness, completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken in your life. And that's much more profound yes. than just saying an absence of turmoil, turmoil. or an absence of war um, in your life. There's mm. no doubt about it. Mm. Uh, so let's go down. Uh, the next verse we looked at was Mark chapter 7, verse 15. That says, there is nothing, no thing, nothing. there is no thing that enters a man from outside which can defile him or make him uh, useless or of no value to the things of God, yes, yes, spiritually yes. Uh, uh, of no value at all. Mm. And so he's saying this, that there is nothing, there's nothing mm. that uh, a circumstance can bring, a situation can bring, 
um, the words of a person can bring. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that enters a man from outside mm -hmm. that can defile him and make him of no value to God. But it's the things that come out of a man. It's the, it's the way we respond. It's the way we re, uh, not react. We should never react. It's the way that we act, act. towards things. Yep. Those are the things that defile us. Yes. So yeah. even though people can say horrible things and, and uh, faithless, negative, uh, ungodly things against us, and, and unfortunately that happens, mm. it's not those things that can defile us, but it's how we respond. Do we join in? Oh, well, I guess I am pretty useless. I guess I am of no value in that. Or oh, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about and this sort of thing. I read a comment the other day from Dr. Michael Brown. And Dr. Brown um, is, uh, is from Jewish heritage and he's a great, great theologian. Excellent, excellent theologian. And, um, and I mean, this guy digs stuff out of the word and, and just amazing revelation that God brings mm. through him. And someone commented, about, you know, maybe it's time you went and actually studied the Bible and, and did some theology in it, that sort of thing. And I, when I saw that, I thought, gee, I don't think you have any idea what you're talking about, yes, yeah. at all. Because this guy's really quite brilliant. Now, is he perfect? No. No, no, no. He'll make mistakes the same as. And so it's not, it's not what people say and that sort of thing, but it's what we do. Mm. It's, it's what, what we respond with out of the whole thing. And so let's go down to Psalm 25 and uh, verse 22. Would you like to read Psalm 25, verse 22? Yeah. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all their troubles. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, God. Come on. Bring us out of all our troubles. Mm. And, and, and realizing that in a, in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to go back and look at covenant again. Because the Lord's been just speaking to me and dealing with me um, in, in areas of the covenant. And I, and I want to share some of those things with you again. But this is covenant talk here. Come on, God, you know, out of deliver me out of all my troubles. Yeah. Redeem me out of all my troubles. And and I I just hear this, God going, okay. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliver you out of all your troubles. Yeah. Just keep your faith in me. Keep believing in me. And what should I do? Don't panic about it. Don't get all upset about it. Don't get on edge about it or anything at all like that. We we, we could make that our, our prayer. We could go, redeem Australia, oh God, out of all their troubles. Why not? Why not? It's still the word of God, even though it might say Israel. It's talking about the land. Yeah. Um, and, and the political rule, Israel. It's re redeem Israel, O oh God, out of all their troubles. So we can make that a prayer for Australia. Yeah. Redeem Australia. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and so, and the Bible goes on to says that, and David strengthened himself in the Lord. Yes. And, and so um, he's talking about he strengthened God, strengthened my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions. Uh, strengthened all of those things. And then he said this, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm -hmm. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yep. Now, let's go on and let's look at Matthew chapter 11. We're going to look for it verses 28, 29, and 30. But I, I want us to look at it from the message translation because I think it's absolutely brilliant the way that the message translation portrays these particular verses of Scripture yeah. in here. And there's such revelation in all of this. It, it's profound stuff. And so, <clears throat> while I clean my throat, would you like to read it? <clears throat> Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything, anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. 
what what tremendous tremendous uh, revelation and instruction yeah in these verses of scripture yeah. but you see when you when you get disappointment disappointed you you get you just get frustrated and you can you can feel like well nobody cares about me nobody nobody just nobody cares about me you you get tired and well I'm not going to do anything again all I get is criticized and pulled down over it and mm. and um, and then you get you get you can get to a place of being burnt out and and here in the message translation he says burnt out of religion and and to me it can be religious ceremonies you know well we've always done it that way you know my my parents did it that way. My grandmother did it that way. And my great-grandmother did it that way. Well, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, maybe your parents or grandparents or great-grandparents might have been doing it the wrong way. Yep. It's the old story that I remember hearing years and years ago that whenever a person got a leg of lamb, they, they, would, they would cut the end off it and, um, and put it in the pan and cook it in the pan. And one day, finally, someone said to their mother, Mum, why do you cut the end off the, the leg of lamb before you cook it? And the mother said, well, my mother always did that. And so they went back to the grandmother, and they said to the grandmother, why did you always cook, uh, why did you always cut the, the end of the leg of lamb off before you cooked it? And she said, oh, well, because it didn't fit in the pan I had. Yeah. And so this tradition has come down through the family, everyone thinking this is right, this is, this is the right way to do it. But all it was was a simple thing way years ago that they didn't have a big enough pan. Mm. And so religion and ceremonies can be like that. Well, we did it because my family did it and, and so on through there. And so we're going to take um, our, our last uh, uh, seven minutes together talking about this. And then again, next Thursday, we're going to talk about it as well. And so he says this, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion or religious ceremonies? Ha have you lost your joy and your passion for what God has called you to do? And how often we can do that? I don't know about you, but, but, you know, I remember back um, when, when I was first born again. Oh, like, Jesus revolutionized our lives. Yeah. Like, like he literally turned us upside down and shook a whole bunch of stuff out of us, mm. put us back up the right way, and then refilled us again. Mm. You know, things like, like drinking alcohol and swearing and, and, and all this kind of stuff. Jesus delivered us from all of that and revolutionized our life. And we're passionate for God. Yes. Yeah. And we're on fire for God. We, we, we didn't want to listen to the radio anymore. We, we just wanted to listen to cassette tapes. And some of you go like, yeah, it was that far back. <laughs> cassette tapes. And, and we were hungry for God. And there can be times in life where you just start to feel maybe tired or burnt out. You, you just feel like, well, I've been doing this for so long that it hasn't changed it. And, and what do I need to change? And so you kind of feel a bit dry and, 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 uh, and, and you just feel you, like the fire's burnt out. You've got some coals, but the fire from those coals is burnt out. And many times people can get like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and stuff happens in life and it just takes that, that real passion out of your being. Mm. But, but Jesus, he gives us the answer right here. He gives us three words that if you and I will not just hear them, but hear them in our spirit and then be committed to do what we hear, we'll totally revolutionize our lives will cause us to be passionate and hungry and thirsty and on fire for God again and that is these words right here 
and we're out of time. Well, no, we're just joking. I'm <laughs> just joking. Just being mean. It's these words. He says, come, come to me. To me. <laughs> just let those three words sink in, down in your spirit. No, don't hear them with these things. Hear them here in your spirit. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. Mm. Don't allow yourself to be put off by all of the stuff people are saying, by what's happening in the world and, and, and all. No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't be put off by all of that. Don't allow that to wear you out. Don't allow that to make you tired. Don't allow that to become just a religious ceremony. Well, every week I come to church and I lift my hands and surrender to God and I, I worship Him and, and I sit there during the sermon and sometimes I hear it and sometimes I don't hear it. And, and we've lost the passion when the, when the pastor says amen and the meeting is finished. Zoom, I'm out in case somebody wants to talk to me or that. Yeah, don't, don't be like that. Let there be a fire in your belly. Because he didn't say come to church, but you should come to church. It's really important you come to church because there's a corporate anointing you come under. It's the place where you get to worship. It's the place where you get to be fed. It's the place where you come to be a blessing to someone else. Mm. So it's important to be able to attend church. Yes. But in your attending church, you need to be coming to Jesus. Yeah, coming to the... Yep. And, and coming to, to uh, worship and to magnify Him and to bless Him. And, and I believe if we will take those three words right there, come to me, we will defeat disappointment in a very, very, very real and practical way in our lives. Oh, definitely, yes. And now our time has gone from us, and not joking this time. And um, and so we're going to take this up again next Thursday night, and we're going to talk more about coming to Him and, and uh, recovering our life, because a lot of time people uh, lose their life when when they're, they're in Christianity for a while, they don't know who they are or what they're doing or that, and they're no longer understanding what it's, it means to take a real rest in Him. So, Father, we bless all of our family, all of our yes. friends, all of these precious people who give their energy and their time to hear and listen to the Word of God. And let revelation impact every one of their hearts in a very real and profound way. We pray that for them in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Look forward to speaking and sharing more with you again next Thursday night. Remember this, that we love you and Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Bless. See you next week.